హలో ఉమా మేడం ఎస్ ఎస్ మేడం ఓకే మేడం మ్యామ్ యూ కెన్ యూ కెన్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ ద గెస్ట్ మ్యామ్ ఓకే ఎస్ మ్యామ్ స్టాప్ మేడం మేడం స్టాప్ షేరింగ్ ద స్క్రీన్ మేడం 
Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Can I start? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It's audible now. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Supriya, madam. Ma'am, you can. Ah, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Welcome back. This is again Dr. B. Uma Devi, Faculty of Mathematics, Coordinator of particular program. I, on behalf of Redas Institute of Science and Technology, Parovan, come on, invite you to day three of our five days faculty development program on online ICT tools for effective teaching and learning. In the first two days, we had sessions on introduction to ICT. There we learned six free online ICT tools by Principal Sir and LMS and Moodle software by K. Sudhaka Sir. And we are thankful to audience for their successful participation and patience delivery. Today, we are going to have a session on e-resources e for effective teaching and learning by Professor Patanjali Sastri Akella Sir. It's a great privilege for me to introduce our today's speaker, Professor Patanjali Sastri Sir. He is a system engineer, faculty, and entrepreneur with 20 years experience in all aspects of software system operations, management, visionary product developer, and the process consultant. Professor Patanjali Sastri Sir is currently working as head of the department of SSE at Sri Ramlu Chalavadi Matikarjuna College of Engineering and Technology, Vijayawada. Earlier, he worked as an assistant professor at PR Siddhartha Engineering College, Vijayawada. He handled more than 15 courses for the students. In addition to his teaching experience, experiences, he had industrial experience also. He worked as a software engineer in ele electronic data processing department at Center Nezalaya, Chennai. He worked as a quality manager as healthcare, high tech, and telecom domains, and also internal auditor for PCS Hyderabad. He is a member of professional bodies like ISTAM, ISTE, ACM, IE, CSI, ISSE, SBI, WC, ICSCS, and Internal Association of Engineers. He conducted sessions on PCS, Integrated Quality Management System, and also quality model, models, responsibilities of quality assurance engineer manager to quality team, project leaders, and project managers of TCS Hyderabad. He involved in surveillance audit for ISO 2000, upgradation audit for ISO 2005, and played an important role in implementing quality process for the projects which were audited. As an internal auditor, he conducted internal audits on 50 more projects at TCS Hyderabad branch audit group. Coming to our educational institutions, he delivered so many guest lectures at various educational institutions and as, and as a resource person in so many seminars. He published 15 research papers in international journals, and also he presented his work at nine international and uh, four national conferences. His main achievements are he guided the project a Railway Incident Recovery System for national level contest, with the bag, which bagged third prize with a cash award of 50,000 rupees, conducted by UNICEF Bangalore in 2015. He guided e-learning portal for Wipro Live Project Learning Organization Portal in 2014. His one of research paper has been listed in Australian Society for Commerce Industry and Engineering, Sydney, Australia. One of his papers received the Best Paper Award in the seminar conducted by Institution of Engineers Vijayawada in 2005. One, two of his papers presented in inter con international conference were briefed in the columns of one of the leading newspaper, the Chronicle, in 2010. I'm so delighted to introduce Professor Patanjali Sastri sir to give his information on this occasion. Now, I, I, am, I am thankful to 
thankful to Supriya Madam for giving this opportunity. Now I request Professor Patanjali sir to start his session. Over to Patanjali sir. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm audible now. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes sir. Welcome, sir. Okay. And I thank, uh, yes, I thank uh, Dr. Umar Devi Garu, Dean Academics, for uh, uh, giving a nice, uh, like, uh, she briefed my profile. I'm a normal woman. And uh, I am uh, right now, uh, I'm also, uh, uh, like, uh, I'm in a faculty community right now, like you also. I'm also like like you like you people. I'm also teaching students, and uh, the, uh, today uh, today's session actually uh, has got its uh, own importance. And not only that, uh, your uh, Friday workshop FTP uh, online ICT tools for effective teaching and learning. Uh, right now, it is uh, uh, right. You are rightly uh, org organizing this, uh, this particular workshop because. Uh, this is the need of the work. And I congratulate the uh, University College of Engineering, the principal, Dr. Uh, J. Lakshmarayan Garu. And uh, also, I want to congratulate the uh, Department of CSC, uh, uh, and, uh, which is organizing this particular workshop. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, uh, <coughs> Professor uh, I. Nasimur uh, Garu and the uh, head of the department, CSC along with his team members who are working uh, behind this screen, uh, make this particular uh, workshop to end up in grand success. And also I want to uh, congratulate uh, Professor Supriya Menon Garu and uh, Dr. Deer Garu, Deer Quality Management System. Because quality management system I, I like very much because I uh, last uh, uh, five to six years in TCS, TCS, I worked in quality management only. So, uh, without quality, uh, whatever you are doing now, without implementing quality, we cannot achieve good results. So, I believe that quality definitely is going to help us to achieve results. And coming to this particular topic, during this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, it has uh, quickly led us, like uh, closure of these colleges, universities, and all around the world, not only in India. But the thing is, the social distancing and uh, physical distancing, what we have today, has really attempted to reduce interpersonal contact. So today I'm speaking and I can't see you. You will be listening to me and you will be seeing me on the screens. So that uh, kind, of, kind of connection, which is really going to build a gap. That's what. The second thing is we need to respond to this pandemic definitely because coming years we don't know when this is going to get closed. But we have to respond to this pandemic with uh, what we call is it's an emergency period. So emergency e-learning is what is going to be implemented. So we have to make this happen. And uh, this rapid transition of what you call face-to-face -face classes and also uh, like uh, we are switching over to online e-learning classes. So definitely will impact what you call the outcome of teaching and learning. And uh, we have to see that good results or better results could be achieved through this also. So that's why I want to congratulate the entire excuse team of... Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, sir, there is some disturbance in the uh, voice, sir, audio, sir. So I just okay, want to call all the participants to uh, please mute. Uh, I request Actually, to part. From my side, it's okay, ma'am. No, from that side, yes, sir. I just want to tell about the participants, sir, because they are putting oh, messages. Oh, yes, sir. No issues. Yes, sir. No issues. I'm no just uh, concluding this. Please, uh, to this end, I want to congratulate the entire team of uh, Priyadarshini for organizing, organizing such a nice workshop, which is also a need of all.
ఇప్పుడు ఇస్ ఇట్ విజిబుల్ సార్ ఓకే సార్ యువర్ వీడియో ఈజ్ ఓకే గుడ్ సార్ కెన్ యు గో హెడ్ మ్యామ్ ఎస్ ఎస్ సార్ ఎస్ సార్ ఓకే నో ఇష్యూ సో ఎస్ ఐ విల్ స్టార్ట్ విత్ మై ప్రెజెంటేషన్ మేడం you know very well that the bodily exercise used to change depending upon our bmi and all okay it doesn't do any harm to the body uh, plato has given this but the knowledge which is acquired under compulsion that means you have to learn if at all there is any compulsion then sometimes what happens uh, it obtains no hold on the mind that means due to compulsion we learn certain things but if you create an interest in that in learning definitely your output will be good so that is what exactly uh, what i want to just uh, uh, mention here and then proceed further so this is uh, uh, like a quote given by eric is the manager of online learning and development and also he is a adjunct professor of uh, queens university he says whenever you look at uh, the e learning part many think that uh, uh, they look at the technology whether the technology is going to replace the people and all those things let us not get into that so here what we have to think about is we first understand that technology is not replacing the faculty and uh, we need to understand that the technology is going to help us to, to teach and learn better so that we have to understand before we proceed uh, to this particular uh, topic and uh, not only that uh, what is e learning is uh, 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 like uh, i want to just answer in brief this particular definition it is a formalized learning specifically uh, what we try to do is we deliver through internet using electronic devices like uh, our computers mobile and other digital media and also allow the student to learn courses outside the traditional classrooms so now you are all doing that you are uh, you are teaching your students outside the classrooms so that should be happening effectively so for that what we have to do it is only i'm sharing you i don't say that you don't you don't know all these things you know very well but i want to just create a consciousness among you like uh, we we want to go like this including me i have to create that kind of consciousness now uh, uh, why this particular workshop has been uh, uh, organized by you people i know very well the impact of covid-19 on education and the education has changed dramatically you know with the rise of uh, like a distinct rise of e learning and you you need lot of e learning materials to learn first and in order to become yourself as learner number one and also to become a good faculty as well uh, and also the teaching is undertaken remotely uh, as we are doing right now and on digital platforms and not only the students and teachers also have to quickly adjust to new routines like technologies devices we have to learn how to use them so that is like these things are now happening very quickly last three months we are fighting with this and we we are we want to uh, complete our syllabus we want to complete the labs but how it happen it has to happen through what you call online so that that, that is the only thing what we have to think about only another thing which many th- many people have challenge is nothing but we cannot have the same 9 to 5 schedule we are going to work beyond that you know very well sometimes classes are uh, conducted after 5 also so how to make this happen with uh, a particular institute with a particular group of students with a particular group of faculty we cannot achieve all these things so the government and private that be private here means the institutions uh, where we are working so everybody all the institutions and the government and the universities everybody should come together and they have to look into the pitch into the short term and long term futures of the students so how to achieve outcome in near future and also how to attend it or how to address this if at all this is going to happen in a long term so we need to what you call bridge the gap in this digital divide to avoid this unprecedented in the sense uh, it, we didn't expect it so and the social disaster will happen if at all it is not addressed properly so that's what exactly what i want to uh, like put before you 
Now, uh, looking at uh, how the COVID-19 has really impacted again, we have to see there is a lot of growth and adoption of education technology, not this year alone. You could see last five years it is happening. Many softwares have come, many learning materials, uh, uh, online le learning, teaching methodologies have been implemented. So many things have happened, but when you look at uh, the business insiders, uh, uh, what you call study, they say that global edtech has invested uh, 18.6 billion in 2019, but now it is projected to reach up to 350 million dollars by 2025. So, how much is going to be invested? How? What is that particular? Uh, what you call the analysis? What they have done is really showing that many companies are going to invest in this education sector. So we are forced to use those uh, what you call uh, online resources. So that is what exactly what I want to speak before you. We go for normally the free learning resources, but those people also may come into, they, they want to what you call earn some profits means. So we need to pump a lot of money in education sector in coming days. So language apps are the uh, virtual tutorials, video conferencing tools, online learning uh, software, these, these are the things where we are going to invest more money. And uh, there has been a significant surge nowadays. It has been pushed all of a sudden. It has uh, gone to a peak to use, we are forced to use these online resources in COVID-19 pandemic. Now, I want to just uh, uh, make you to understand that uh, the students and teachers we communicate usually in traditional classrooms. We have personal interact, interaction with them. But here we are going to communicate with each other using mobile phones, tablets, and laptops. I'm not telling that you don't know all these things. You know that. But a lot of challenges are involved in that because the last two months we are, we are facing those challenges. So that's why I'm just uh, underlining these three things. Mobile phones, you know very well that students, if at all they use, uh, they have to look for the bandwidth and all those things. Even the laptops they use, they should have good laptops with them to work with. So these are all challenges ahead for both faculty as well as the students to address these challenges. And uh, what is the focus now? It is on launching more e-learning courses. As a faculty, you, have, you are going to develop your own e-learning course, how to make them to understand, we'll see that. But also, you need to uh, come out with uh, some tools to analyze students' performance. Whether the students is doing well, they are, they are performing well or not, how will you uh, uh, measure their performance? But that we have to think what tools you are going to use for that. And not only that, delivering of uh, lessons and uh, uh, making students to attend the classes is not, uh, not only the important thing, but in order to measure their performance, we need to have the tools and uh, for the faculty also to track the progress of the students to what, to what extent they have achieved the uh, what you call uh, how much they have completed what part of the course they have completed so in order to track that also is going to be a challenging task for us so these things are pushing really the decision makers uh, decision makers are nothing but your uh, management to start online uh, uh, online learning platforms to continue the education safely on both the small and large scale, how to do that. And also, you need to have a greater use of virtual platforms. So what platforms you are going to, I think uh, Sudhakar would have given you, thrown light on few, uh, what you call, uh, the software or uh, tools. And coming days, we may also provide you more tools because he's good in, he's a technical savvy. He can do a lot of, uh, uh, he's doing a lot of research on that. So we'll share all those things with the, uh, like, uh, um, uh, once we interact with uh, Dr. J. L. And uh, the education institutions, how they are going to shift to online using this uh, e-learning base. So uh, yesterday we got uh, what you call from J2K to conduct the project Viva through online. And we conducted mock uh, uh, Viva, but we faced a lot of problems. We have listed out those things. Student, the three students will be, uh, what you call, I can see three students, but the other student will not be visible. So can it happen in online? Because that is a student, he is facing some problems. With, uh, he is facing some network issues. So how can we, uh, what you call, eliminate those problems? So 
slowly those things will come out. So we need, but somehow we are going to shift to online uh, using this e-learning ways and remote learning adoption is increasing across the globe nowadays. So many people are taking courses in uh, Coursera, edX, and Udemy, Udacity. So these are some of the tools, uh, some of the forums through which they are learning some uh, courses in order to faculty. They want to have the continuous learning. Definitely they have to learn a lot. Today, uh, you know very well that Industry 4.0 is uh, has really uh, uh, has got its uh, like it really impacted the education system. So it is not that CSC, uh, ECE separately or desperately can uh, work. They, they have to, what you call, uh, interact with each other. That means we need to work on some interdisciplinary uh, projects. So where we have to learn some ECE techniques, uh, yeah, the techniques related to electronics and communication. And uh, electronics and communication should learn some Python, data, data science, and all those things. So these things are going to be there. So remote learning adoption should be always there, even without this COVID-19 COVID impact. So we are doing that. We are continuing to do that. And uh, we know very well that there are only two delivery methods. One is on-site instructions as we do in classrooms and uh, online instructions as now we are doing that. So, and sometimes we can combine both. Uh, previously, we used to do that. Certain things we give them to learn on their own so that uh, they can go for some online instruction. But today, online instruction is going to be the only method which is going to be adopted. So that we have to think about. So. The digital revolution has really uh, made that to happen. So we have to learn how we can access the content, how we can consume it, how we can disseminate it, and how it is discussed and how it is shared. So this is these are the things which we have we want to do through the technology. Okay, now coming to the challenges. You know very well that okay, the students' knowledge and skills that must be in line with our state standards. That means your university, your uh, uh, institutions, if adult is going to be an autonomous college. So they have their own standards. So how to make students to learn and to be what you call uh, measured on their performance? That should be done and that should be taken care of in line with our own standards. So we have some standards in place. So how we say that the student have achieved this? So we have to uh, like try to increase that through these uh, uh, online methods. So how we achieve that, that we have to think that is going to be a big challenge. Second thing is how to make ourselves, like how to upskill ourselves as a faculty. Uh, to the uh, fast aging uh, technology that is happening in the world. So that is also going to be a challenge now. And uh, the collective focus should be like the opportunities, like whatever we have for the faculty and students to learn to achieve the better results. Because previously we conduct uh, exams like uh, in a formative, uh, like a assess uh, assessment system, where we can uh, we give some questions, let them answer the questions, and we correct the papers and then award some marks. But today, how we do that, descriptive and all, how we are going to assess. So that is going to be a real challenge. It is uh, like we need to focus on that also. And ACT has taken that uh, recently. That there, there is some discussion on that. Uh, so we have to see what is the result of the particular discussions. And they are taking uh, opinions from many universities, many uh, uh, different uh, uh, academicians from IITs and all. And uh, we need to create an environment that fosters the academic success like the outcomes of the students should be good and they must be employable, they must be uh, what you call uh, sent to some higher studies. So we should create an environment so this should not be affected. So how we are going to achieve that is very, very important. And we can use multiple instruction method approaches and assessment to increase student learning. But all these are challenges I want to place before you. We need to address them. We need to come up with a systematic methodology to address all those things. That's what I want to uh, what you call uh, stress upon today. OK, now as a faculty, you know very well that we are going to uh, design and uh, we uh, construct our own e-learning resources. But we need to look into 
we mean we should maintain some quality in that we should look at what students expect from you we should see how the learner is going to learn from that we first we should become a learner to construct these resources so uh, i give few points so what are the things you are going to really concentrate upon to make a good you come out with a good e learning resources one is we need to understand the tools for designing and publishing e learning resources they are freely available now we should look at like a uh, uh, through the website you can do that podcast you can use video cast you can use youtube you can use right so we have to look into those tools for creating online courses so we have to learn some tools to do that number one that is jay lakshman vengari has got he has worked on a lot of things i know very well because uh, last uh, 10 days he was working on that because we used to uh, we used to uh, speak over phone so i do understand that always he will be there on learning the tools and other faculty might have uh, like uh, they might be doing that also I, since i know him very well i'm just uh, referring his name and also the platform such as youtube tedx tedx is uh, one of the best tools for you to create your materials so some people uh, know that so you can also learn it and then create your materials and there is something called as creative commons those who are submitting their papers nowadays they uh, they uh, publish their papers under creative commons licensing so whatever materials you create should be going to this that means you are you are the person who is like having stake in that that means you have you hold some uh, sort of what you call uh, ownership on that nobody else can uh, copy that so uh, th- that is also there today so whatever material we create we can uh, have this uh, creative commons licensing on that and uh, the people uh, before they want to use they they have to ask your permission to use that and uh, one more thing is you need to have always a supporting teaching staff who is good in tools who is good in uh, who is a tech savvy for developing all these e learning because you may have time sometimes you may not have time to, because you can collect a lot of content so how to place them how to uh, have a creative uh, way of uh, uh, designing your own presentation so you must be supported with some teaching staff you can recruit uh, one or two so that they can help you in developing the teaching and learning materials so these things you have to have in your uh, mind before you design and uh, make e learning resources that's what i felt uh, with my experience but uh, one thing already i told you quality first uh, initially i told uh, that the name you know is uh, like dean qms i was in quality i told but whatever we uh, on what, what whatever whether you work in academics or you work in the industry you should have something in your mind that is nothing but quality quality is first and quality is free also suppose i give i uh, deliver some uh, product to a customer customer will not uh, look into whether quality is uh, like uh, he will not say that i will need only the product he will say that it should be a quality product that means quality is embedded is uh, like uh, it is free with the product so like that whenever you de- deliver the dog some uh, e learning resources you should keep that in your mind like quality is first so whatever you are doing whether it is content whether it is going to be uh, what you call a uh, simulation whether it is going to be a video you should be having some quality that means whatever you are giving to the uh, learners should be of high quality so that that will definitely make students learn faster and uh, they will definitely achieve the mastery level so in order to do that so you keep that in your mind quality first and uh, you should think about another one how to retain information for a long time what can i do through my presentation so that also is kept in your mind while you de- uh, develop or uh, deliver your content the third one is we need to provide what you call a link to various resources i cannot say that all the contents we take from different resources only but uh, we give some useful resources to them links to them so that they can get into that and then learn a lot beyond that so that also should be should be happening with your presentation and uh, you need to provide some discussion boards also some you learn uh, online you learn uh, you learning resources you have created see that you are having some discussion board along with that some chats to enable so the students can immediately ask some question 
so that you can interact with them through online. You may not, uh, what you call, through voice, it may not happen, but at least you can type that and then clar clarify that those. So these things you have to keep in mind while uh, creating or uh, designing your, your email businesses. And uh, two things I want to stress upon. One is uh, we have uh, disabled uh, students always in the class. One is like visually impaired students are there. We, we got uh, one, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, the hearing impairment, a student who is having hearing impairment, uh, lost badge. But it is it is very difficult for, for us to address those students. So through this, it, it can happen very easily. So uh, what you have to keep in your mind is you should be, uh, what do you call, integrate your technologies. You should have integrated technologies like uh, voice to text. If you speak, it should appear as a text for few students who can't listen. So that can, that can also happen through your uh, uh, online e-learning resources. You can also, slowly it will happen. Slowly you can uh, bring it to that level. We have to work a lot on that. It is not that much easy. And uh, voice activated programs also should be there. Those who cannot visually, uh, like uh, the visually impaired students should understand what you are trying to tell. So that is also very important. And uh, the video lectures with the subtitles, those who are really having he hearing impairments, we need to look into these aspects also. Then only we will become successful in coming days. Otherwise, it is going to be a difficult task. So we look at now two things. One is student perspective and faculty perspective. What exactly we are going to deliver? One is a completely transformed way in which learning is important to the student. So we know that it is going to be online. And how to make it make your, uh, that learning simpler? That means from the student perspective, I have to learn things very simply, very easily. They can think like that. And they can, like uh, traditional methodology, you will write on the blackboard, you try to make them to understand. Uh, people, once you, uh, what do you call, uh, deliver that, if at all they understand, it's okay. But if they, want, if they don't understand or they go home and then finally they want to recollect, it's very difficult. So that your interaction will be over. And tomorrow they have to ask for some doubts and then get clarified. But here it is not like that. If at all they have any clarification, they can again run the same presentation. So it will be more effective for them uh, when compared with your traditional chalk and board. And many big diagrams can be shown visually in, the, in animatic effects so that they can understand what is happening. How, let us assume that how the packets are moving. So I want to show them. On Blackboard, it's very difficult have to draw the packets on the network uh, channel. But here, it is not like that. They can You can show it in a simulated way. So that is another advantage what you have. And uh, the students can also access the content an unlimited number of times, you know, just now we discussed about that. Whenever they want, they can access it. And uh, whenever it is required, the time of division, actually, they, they will not, they learn once, some people, they learn once, and before examination, they want to revise it. So they want to have uh, another look at it, the presentation. So uh, these things can be done with uh, online learning very easily because online uh, learning will help in these aspects for them. And uh, you know very well that education is no longer a level of work for disabled students because I already showed you in the last uh, uh, two uh, bullet points. So for disabled students, it is not going to be a difficult one. For them, it is going to help them. So that we have to keep in mind. So uh, when you, uh, what you call design any content, so keep these things in mind and then create it. And for faculty, you know very well that in the NBA, they say continuous learning. In NAC, they say continuous learning. So how you achieve continuous learning? How many of them have achieved in your uh, uh, department? Those things are measured. So here, continuous learning is easier than ever. So online, you know very well, a lot of resources are available. We'll see one by one in the coming slides. And then uh, studies syndicate, uh, like uh, in the internet, you can see that the time required to learn is reduced to 40% if at all you go on online. But in traditional learning, on books and all, it takes a lot of time to digest and then. But in online learning, uh, you know, like uh, having, uh, what do you call the simulations, multimedia effects, and uh, looking at the pictures, okay, looking at the contents and in short form, you can easily understand. In a very short span of time, you can learn a lot of things. 
So the studies tell that. So that is another uh, advantage of this e-learning because today my topic is that as I have to support it, whether you like it or not. And the results in improved scores on certification. You can say that you give some uh, what you call online resource to your student. You say that you complete the uh, course and then get a certificate. Then I will assume that you are passed in this particular assignment. You can give these things as an assignment. So that students start learning. Uh, I want to tell you one thing. You many students to learn how to learn. That is very important. Today, these online resources are forcing us to make students to learn how to learn. And for us also, we have to take a place. And how you conduct tests, I will sh uh, show you, uh, well, there is a big challenge in here also, but we can conduct tests to see whether they have achieved whatever we expect, the expected levels of achievement, uh, yeah, like outcome is achieved or not, those things can be understood. And also, the other type of uh, evaluation, like both faculty and students, can uh, it is applicable to them. For us also, whether we have achieved whatever uh, we want to achieve. So you can measure on your own. And also, for students, you can also measure that. So these, these are all different things from student perspective and faculty perspective. If you look at online e-learning, is going to help you a lot So in these perspectives. Now, uh, Jennifer, she is the community manager at uh, Trivant is actually uh, the company which is uh, developing e-learning uh, authoring tools. She is telling that whenever you develop uh, e-learning material, you think like a learner. Don't uh, we should not say, think ourselves as a faculty, but you think like a learner, and you look at your presentation, see what is really is going to draw your attention as a learner. That you think, and then what is going to make you, how it is going to make you sit uh, for long hours and li uh, look, uh, listen to your presentation or uh, view your uh, YouTube video. So, what, uh, how you are going to make it. So, these are the things which you have to remember. Is you, you first think that you are a learner and then see how you are going to really uh, pull the attention of the students. As a learner, if you understand that, those things can be really, uh, clearly, uh, what you call, transform that to a presentation. And you can really enjoy, enjoy your presentation so that you can uh, assume that your students will also enjoy your presentation. So this, this, this is the uh, code given by Jennifer, who, who are working on online uh, the e-learning uh, uh, tools and uh, e-learning, uh, those who are going to uh, develop e-learning tools. So they are, have, they are uh, by Jews and all, these people are really working their side. So uh, we need to uh, what if, uh, look upon this particular uh, thing also. And also, use all forms of media, whatever media which is going to support your... Uh, suppose I want to uh, show a real-time example. How can I show that? So what media I can use for that? So how students will uh, learn it? How students can understand very easily? Whether it is going to be a video, whether it is going to be a multimedia uh, material, or whether, whether it is going to be anything else, which I can, I have to use all these media, I have to learn them. So, uh, really, it is pushing, irrespective of the disciplines, we have to learn many tools, not only computer science and engineering, we have electronics, uh, electronics and communication, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, everybody has to learn now today the tools which are going to really help them to. Uh, like uh, create the e-learning material. So use all forms of media at your disposal to engage and promote retention. Retention in sense, once you see that, it will be, it should be uh, what you call seeded in your mind. How can I do that? So Rick is the president of Relay Corporation. Uh, he's also from the e-learning and training company. So he has uh, said that. So they, they consider all these things by developing their tools. So I have taken quotations from these people. And then I want to just uh, place before you. And another, because we are talking about the quality, I'm coming to the uh, third one. Instead of designing by focusing on content, because today PowerPoint presentation means we look at the content only. How much, how lot of content we want to put, flags of content we want to put on the uh, slides. So we assume that, okay, students will learn everything. But the thing is, a uh, lot of content immediately if they see on the screen automatically. As a faculty, we can sit and uh, read all those things, but students will not look into that. 
So that's why instead of designing by focusing on content, focus on learning experience first. We should learn first. Once we learn, how we learn, we look into so many resources. We have to get into so many resources. So some resources will really attract you. So that you think that, okay, why can't I replicate the same thing in my presentation? So like that. So first learn that. Learning experience is first. And once you do that, then you can design your what you call presentation. You can focus on your how to put my content on the slides. What are the things that can be put on the slides? And all these things will be learned. So the Michael Allen is the CEO of Allen Interaction. You know him. He's giving a lot of certifications. So you and he is in learning industry since 1975. So he has given this particular quote. So we need to practice that. So all these quotes really make you to practice. Once we practice, yes, we are uh, maintaining the quality that we can assume. That's why I have given what what these people are telling. These people are uh, they belong to some leading industries. So. Why they are leading in education uh, sector? Uh, uh, these people are uh, developing educational tools. Why they are leading in that? So because these people are giving their opinion. So that's why I want to put before you. So if learning material is designed to be highly relevant and delivered in the context, then it is likely to be used. So finally, it should be relevant and it should be delivered in context. So you give some. Uh, what you call theorem, and you say where it is applied. You show those applications. So if at all you do like this, then I think people will understand why the theory has come, why the whole theory is going to what you call apply, and why we are learning this theory. So that is another way of uh, what you call uh, another thing which we have to understand to develop your material or your content. So is Charles, who is a co-founder of Seventy Twenty Ten Institute. It is also a training uh, institute, like a, a institute, and uh, he's the senior director in uh, like the enterprise strategy of Internet Time Alliance. So he has given this particular quotation. So these things we need to have uh, in mind uh, to maintain the quality on the uh, what you call learning resource, whatever we are developing. Now the next contest where I am going is I want to show you uh, different learning resources. Uh, so fa few faculty know all these things, and many faculty know certain things. So whatever it may be, uh, let me like uh, tell you that since I am also a faculty, let us recollect what are all various uh, resources are existing. So let us look into all these things, and more resources you can also see. But to uh, like, I have confined myself to few uh, uh, really uh, few resources which are really helpful for us to uh, learn things, and then uh, in our own discipline. So we will see that one by one. So, uh, uh, so Mahatma Gandhi ji is uh, he has quoted, "Live as if you are to die tomorrow." That means. Uh, contentment should be there in our mind to live. It is not that uh, to die we are living. So there should be some sort of contentment in us. Enough should be there in your mind. But learn as if you are going to live forever. So that means you learn as much you can before everybody is going to die one day. But we have to learn a lot, and then uh, we should uh, like uh, we don't know when. When, uh, when this is going to help and how it is going to help. So we have to learn actually because knowledge is uh, a treasure. We have to what you call uh, learn it. So that's what exactly a quote of it. Just I want to put uh, it. Now the first thing, the learning resource. What I want to stress upon is MOOCs. You know today everybody talks about uh, this uh, massive, uh, massive open source uh, materials. And uh, you know very well that the students will get benefited because of these online courses. Of course, the faculty also. And uh, Coursera, Udacity, edX. Uh, these people uh, they uh, conduct uh, what you call they are they are having online courses from uh, the professors who have uh, uh, designed materials from MIT, Harvard, Berkeley, and other many universities. But one thing is, uh, you can learn free of cost, but for certification, you have to uh, spend nominal amount only around 3,000 something. For students, it is going to be uh, definitely a burden. But for faculty, at least for a few certificates, you can pay and then get the certificate. 
So that is number one. But the learning is free. The total course is free for you. Through course, there you can do that. Udacity, edX, and all. Even uh, I miss uh, Udemy is there. So here I have not uh, given. Okay. Now another uh, uh, moves uh, like uh, uh, the resource uh, in the web. You are having class central, which is giving. I will show you the slide. Uh, this is the slide. The class central where you have all the uh, what you call disciplines. So here you see computer science, business, humanities, and coming down you are, you are having what you call uh, uh, engineering uh, disciplines. So what you can do is I can go and click on artificial intelligence. I will get uh, what you call some view, uh, YouTube material or anything like uh, I can. Uh, watch the videos, or I can get the content also. So I can update, update my knowledge through uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, class central uh, MOOCs platform. I can learn a lot of things through this also. So it's a very good, uh, uh, what do you call, resource for you to get the information. And another thing is the engineering students. Suppose they want to access, they, they, they want to have the access to Stanford University lectures and classes, they can go in this particular uh, uh, stanford.edu. So online.stanford.edu, this is going to be something like this. So this is uh, online.stanford.edu, where you see here on the left hand side, uh, whether it is visible or not, I don't know. But uh, why I have kept on the slide is, suppose I want to do it, I have to type it in the browser and then it will take some time to load and all. But I want to just uh, give you the snapshots of this, how it looks. You can go and then I leave this presentation to you. You can just copy that and then uh, paste it in your uh, browser. You can uh, land up in this particular uh, page, web page. So here you can see on the left-hand side, all the engineering disciplines are there. So you get what you call materials like this. So all the courses are displayed. You can get into whatever you want. So you can, uh, the latest emerging technologies also given here. So like that, you can use the MOOCs move platform to uh, MOOCs platform to learn what you call the uh, online, uh, to learn uh, the content on different uh, engineering disciplines. The second one, what I want to uh, show you is there are extensive resources. That means they are all called as mega site. I can't say that you can only learn courses here. You can get uh, what you call white papers, e-books, research findings. Many researchers are there. They want to give their findings, you can download them. And you have so many webinars displayed, So, which is nothing but engineering.com. You can get into that, whether I have that, yes. So here you can see uh, what you call the slide. You, uh, on the top, you are having all the webinars displayed. You can get into that and then you can spend your time to learn it. And another one is here you are having what you call a different, uh, 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 what you call uh, white papers, where I can uh, see how we see. Here, one uses the experience too. So, how, how it is going to be for mechanical engineers, they can learn. So, like that, we are having so many materials here. So, engineering.com is another useful resource for you to learn things which you can use in your content also. So your own uh, e-learning resource which you are going to create, you can use them. So you can also link your video to that. So that's, that's why first you have to go through so many e-learning resources. That's why I have to decide and NASA for EC communications, uh, actually they have got rich uh, amount of knowledge because they are pioneers in education. Uh, the, it's a long back uh, uh, endeavor. Uh, what they are doing is they are dumping all the uh, research uh, outcomes in their website. Not only that, they are giving someone what you call a learning experience also through their website. You can see now, this is the NASA's website. Uh, get into that and you can see for students and educators. For students, these are all the things which they can do. Even I am telling you from 9 to 2, uh, what you call your uh, uh, PhD, you can learn everything. So for, for, for students who are in ninth standard, whatever relevant to them will be given. So for a person who is like uh, doing some research, they can go through all these things. So they have what you call a lot of materials uh, in there. And uh, see here the lectures and webcasts, the exhibits and music. So you can get into that and learn. For educators, they have a different thing. So like that. So this is another useful resource, what I thought. So I want to, uh, uh, what you call, just uh, place before you and also uh, suppose uh, I know I know that uh, many people will fail in mathematics engineering students normally in first year 
M1, M2, and all these things. So, uh, suppose they want to learn uh, how to solve this problem. So, they don't have to worry about it. There is a particular website called the Factory JMT. So, you can get into that. I'll show you an option. Here, you see, under algebra, so many problems are given. And you, you, you have the hyperlink there. If you click it, you'll get the solution. That means the steps uh, they have done towards uh, solving the problem. So, like that, you have algebra, calculus, trigonometry. Uh, and uh, you have integration, differentiation, so many things are there. So you can get into this website and then uh, you can ask your students also get into this website so that it's free of cost. They can view, they can view n number of uh, videos on uh, with regard to the mathematics. So like that, uh, another, uh, uh, these are all the government uh, uh, like the MHRD initiatives, spoken tutorial is one of the thing uh, we are working on. We are, we are having spoken tutorial project in our college. We are doing well, and uh, for every engineering discipline, they have what we call the open source software compatible to your what we call uh, the industry software. So you don't have to purchase any software. They have the compatible free open source software for you. So those things are uh, like you can understand them through this spoken tutorial project. You can get into this site, but you have to pay some 20,000, 24,000 rupees, uh, I believe, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, to the so IIT Bombay. And then you register yourself. And it's a very normal, normal fee. 20,000 is nothing. But here, they conduct the examination at the end of the course. Minimum you have to score forty percent, and uh, once you score that forty percent, a certificate is uh, generated automatically, immediate, immediately, uh, and uh, with, with the IIT uh, Bombay logo and all, uh, you get a certification. So uh, we are, our students, uh, they have uh, they have uh, completed uh, uh, all the students uh, from CSC and few students from uh, ECE uh, and few students from Triple E. Like that, they have completed uh, courses in uh, spoken tutorials. So you can uh, you can ask your uh, principal to get into that. So he knows it. And uh, NPTEL, I don't have to explain you. You know very well. And FOSI is another initiative from uh, uh, by initiative by MHRD. I don't. I uh, uh, if you know that, it's okay. But if you don't know, if you get into this uh, is uh, FOSI dot in. You can see a lot of uh, information regarding uh, projects, the, like uh, projects that are executed or that are, that are being done, are currently being done, and they offer internships, summer internships to your students. So please get into that. They release some uh, what you call, uh, 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 they send some uh, circular to you before uh, they initiate. So you can uh, you can get into that, and then at the time of uh, December like that. You get uh, what you call some uh, you, they ask you to uh, register, ask your students to register for internships. You can make them to register for internships. I think they give you some projects. If you work on those projects, finally, if uh, you uh, you can showcase those projects in their uh, website, so you may get some what you call, or they will call you to IIT Bombay, and uh, there you can showcase so that you will get some internship uh, certificate also. So these are the things which are going to help you to learn a lot on practical learning experience. So today, uh, NBA and NAC, they are telling experiential learning. So you can do the, uh, by getting into these kind of uh, resources. And there is something called as uh, creating digital learning in your own resource they call. So uh, eKalpa, otherwise it is called as, it is also an uh, uh, MHRD initiative. So all these resources are from government only. I don't know how many of them are replacing that, how many of them are not replacing. But uh, just if I, uh, uh, I have given you the links for that, if at all you want, you can get into that and then you can use them for your students' learning. And Swayam, I don't want to, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, through Swayam, you are connecting in people. So this is another uh, e-learning uh, initiative uh, by uh, MHRD. So these are, uh, I have uh, what you call club, all the MHRD initiatives are in one place. And then I want to just show you. So these are the things. Now, I move on to the virtual labs. Uh, virtual lab is also very important for us because uh, I, uh, it is a difficult task for us to make students to go to our labs today. As of today, 
can you ask our students to go to labs physically and then work on the instruments? Then how will they learn how to work on the devices? So there are some platforms which make you simul not only simulations, they, uh, they bring out that, uh, that kind of what you call uh, feeling or that kind of uh, experience to you uh, that you are working on these devices uh, using your virtual lab. So how, why it is needed means uh, even if you don't have the problem, that means even if you work in labs, everything is fine today, you can go to your labs and then work even in that situation. Uh, how to make your students to learn subject in a very uh, exhaustive way? That means, or in a very simpler manner, or simple, in a very, very easy manner they can get the things, is you understand the problem, and uh, what do people need to do? That we have to think, and uh, help them practice doing it with realistic challenges. So, in order to make it, so we create a problem now, we ask students to work on that. So students, they have to understand the problem and how to make them to work on it is going to be a difficult task always. So, virtual labs will help you to, what do you call, uh, uh, comfortably work in that environment. So, there are a few, uh, VLabs everybody knows. So, uh, HTTP, uh, vlab.code, I have not shown any picture on that because everybody knows virtual This initiation or uh, uh, collaborative environment created by all IITs and NITs, they have come out with their own. I will show you a list of virtual labs here. If at all it is visible, it's okay. I will show you. Okay, I will, I will share with you. No problem with that, I'll share with you. I'll share with you uh, the VLabs. Uh, otherwise, I will share, I will send a mail to your principal so that he can uh, share with you. you. You can get all the, uh, what you call, links uh, of, uh, what you call, list of VLabs existing. I will send you a link because it's not opening. Uh, but yesterday it was open. I will show that. We'll see. And uh, there is another uh, what you call two uh, virtual labs for especially for electronics and communication. I will show you this uh, what you call e validate. You can see that this is the uh, e validate uh, virtual lab for uh, electronic students and electronic faculty also can use it. So here you see the list of experiments given. And if you click on that, you'll see the experiments, how to do that. Uh, you can see what you call an animated video that you can understand. And your, you, your students can also work in that particular lab. They can create what you call a simulation on their own. So virtual labs help you to understand how to work on the things. So that's why I suggest uh, all the faculty members to utilize virtual lab, uh, uh, what you call, uh, you know, uh, they have given some what you call facilities to you to work on your uh, what you call experiments and all. Before you go to uh, physically go to your devices and work on that, you can work on virtual labs and then make students understand that. Then, if you make them to uh, work on the devices, they will easily work on all your all the devices uh, and they can understand what they are doing. So that's why virtual labs are being made. This is uh, lab alive. So this is another, uh, what you call virtual lab, the, especially for, uh, I think, uh, for communications, this, uh, some signal communication or something like that. So uh, this is the lab which is created, virtual lab created. So you can get into that and then learn the uh, things, the resources. A uh, lot of experiments are available in there, so you can uh, use these resources. And uh, mostly, yes, uh, YouTube is also another good resources. You can, there is a lot of, uh, like, uh, you have a great collection of education videos. If you get into youtube.com for education, you know very well. So, uh, why? Because uh, use video scenarios on this. Because people can easily understand. So, that's why this is another way of learning things, making your students to learn a lot. So, get into youtube.com. And then, uh, if you get into this link straight away, you will be landing up in the land, land up into the educational uh, videos. So this is the 
uh, youtube.com uh, slash education. You can see all the educational studios, uh, sorry, videos, and uh, you can uh, scroll down and then, uh, because I have kept only the screenshot, very quickly you can, uh, what you call, understand them and then complete it. Because if I put it in the browser, it will take time. So uh, these things, you can paste the links, automatically you will land up in the page like this. And other useful resources, Ram Academy, everybody knows nowadays. And uh, another uh, MIT open course, uh, where is there? Actually, you are having uh, nearly 900 classes. More than that, you can get. Uh, it's also another uh, good, um, uh, it's also a MOOC uh, where you can learn a lot. So, ocw.mit.edu, if you get into that, you can get a lot of course materials, free of cost, you can learn. And future learning is another, uh, like uh, this is developed by some industry experts also. That's why I have kept that futurelearn.com, where you can, uh, so, uh, what do you call, watch the videos, content, everything. Right? Now, coming to electrical engineering, I have listed uh, uh, a few uh, useful resources for electrical engineering specifically. So uh, these are all the resources uh, that can help uh, faculty and students of electrical engineering to get into that and then uh, uh, learn the things. One is uh, you are having all the videos here. These things are all uh, whatever I have, have here, uh, the links what I have on my slide, they have what you call all the videos uh, uh, pertaining to the uh, subject as well as uh, some lab also. So you can see them uh, free of cost, you can use them. And here the instructional videos are given uh, by uh, Gary Morrow. So you can directly go the hundreds of uh, what you call material is existing. And uh, for electromechanical digital library is also there, uh, which is developed by Fox Valley Technical College. And uh, you can see the electronics, for electronics also, if the basic electronics it will be useful. For electrical, it will be more useful. So you can get into that and then learn the contents. Other webs, other resources are also given for them. Electrical engineering, they are having a lot of uh, uh, resources on the thing. Even uh, electro electronics and communications also, they have a lot of resources. Uh, but I can show electronics and communication in one single, uh, what you call, link. I can show all the uh, links for them. But for electrical, separately, I have to go. That's the point. Okay? I will give you this, uh, I will leave this PPT with you. For electronic and communication, yes, if you go like this, through this link, you can see a lot of, uh, it's a blog actually, which provides a lot of links to you, like this. You can see, here electronics for you. From that, you are having what you call around uh, uh, 100, uh, what you call, videos, material, and all. You can have link to any best site that is existing for electronics and communication. So you can get into that and then the yeah, electronics uh, engineers definitely should be enjoying this particular blog. For mechanical engineering, you are having uh, E-Funda. You may, you may be knowing ASME also, you may be knowing. So these are all the two things which is providing the maximum, uh, what you call, resources for mechanical engineering. And there is another website which is called as Engineers Search. Dot com. Uh, so that also will help them to learn, like uh, they, can, they can understand uh, what you call uh, the mechanical engineering basics. They, they can use many calculators. So that also can be found here. And you can uh, learn how to build your uh, uh, piston uh, pump and uh, uh, other, uh, what you call, uh, machine dynamics uh, related things. So like that, they can use this particular uh, uh, e-learning resource to learn that. And there is another uh, popular website for mechanical engineers, MacMaster, so that also will be useful for them. So these are the four different uh, things what I feel will be more beneficial to mechanical engineering. And for civil engineering, yes, uh, they have, uh, uh, civil engineering, uh, what you call, keeps changing. Uh, technically, it is going to change. Uh, every year, like uh, CSC and ECE, it keeps on changing very quickly. So they have different websites. Uh, you can see civildigital.com. So where you see uh, what is the current uh, technology or current uh, uh, methodology that is being used for constructing the houses. Uh, areas. 
Hello. Hello. And there is uh, another uh, web page for internships. Uh, why I want to, uh, uh, what you call, take you to this is, uh, faculty, please see that uh, uh, every, uh, in our uh, department, what we have made is, every counselor, uh, we have kept a metric. Every counselor should be, uh, they have 24, uh, every each counselor will have 24 students, right? So, at least we look for internships to be done. By the, by the council. That means the council should uh, motivate the students to do 50 percent, that means 50 percent of the students should be doing the internship and completing the internship. So this has been kept as a metric for them. Otherwise, you uh, the bright students and weak students are there. The weak students will be provided with uh, remedial classes and other things. But how will you motivate your bright students? How will you make them to uh, learn more? Through internships, so you can do that. So, uh, internship is one of the, you know very well nowadays, uh, everybody uh, knows internship. The ACT is also stressing upon uh, doing internships. And internship is going to become mandatory uh, in the coming days. And there is another uh, website called as Let's Intern. And your job is there. So where uh, you get the basic, uh, the basic industrial training. So uh, for BSc students also, it is useful. For mostly it is useful for uh, CSC students. They can get into the divajobs.com. Uh, Edu.info.asia is also another uh, uh, resource which is going to provide communications. Now, uh, I think almost uh, I'm done, but before that, uh, I want to tell you, Find, uh, find out more about your target audience and then design the content to be a close fit for the specific needs. Because why this uh, particular uh, comment is valuable means uh, you can't expect, suppose if you expect uh, 100 students, uh, 80 students may be uh, like 20% uh, of the students may be uh, what you call uh, slow learners and 50% uh, may be uh, average and uh, another 10% uh, 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 may be bright students. So if you target only the 10% then that may not be good. But if you target only that uh, what you call last 30% uh, uh, alone and these 10% will feel that okay these things we know very well, they will not concentrate on your country. So, how to uh, make everybody involved in, in your uh, class, e-learning class, that you have to understand and prepare your material accordingly. So, this has just been given by Rod, who is uh, like a director for uh, Info, because he is the person uh, who is uh, like a, a well-known uh, through Adobe community. So uh, he has uh, given this quote, and we almost these things we know very well. But the thing is, uh, something prevents us to uh, us from doing all these things. So first, we have to come out of that particular barrier, and we need to concentrate on now the target. The time has come. Previously, somehow we are interacting with the students, uh, what you call face to face, and do all the things. But today, we are kept ourselves away from the students. So. Some uh, these barriers that we have still today is going to be a difficult task. So we need to understand. I already told you the quality first. Yes, we have to look into that aspect and create our content, create our materials, and uh, put the content on the slides and the videos on the slides. Provide the links to the uh, the, the appropriate uh, links to the students wherever it is necessary. These things must be taken care, of and then uh, you develop yourself uh, as. As a teacher, as a learner, because teachers are both learners and teachers, and students are always learners uh, till they complete their education. And uh, finally, limitations are always there. We are facing now, uh, this is not something new for you. Online assistants are limited to persons that are only objective in nature. We can provide only the assessment through objective type of persons, though, but we need to provide. Uh, uh, how to evaluate the student based on the subject matter? How to make them to write uh, the content? It is very difficult to do that right now. So we need to come out a solution for that. That is number one. Second, another limitation is uh, you have only what you call uh, uh, practically. Uh, previously, we have seen B labs, right? So the practicality, how to how to uh, what you blend it with our teaching that we have to look into. 
and uh, still you you have the wheel apps with you but the still the students cannot touch any device that is going to be a difficult problem you can understand he knows the knowledge but the thing is unless he touches the device do the things practically then uh, you will get some uh, confidence and you get some confidence that this man can do something so that is also a challenge but still we cannot stop it we have to make them to learn at least in wheel apps okay or one or two days you schedule in the labs with social distancing and make them to work so you they cannot spend more time in labs in future they may not spend like that in another for next semester at least so these things you have to address and how to authenticate a particular student's work now you are in online you give some assignment somebody will do somebody's assignment so can you authenticate that this is the solution we have provided by this tool so we can do it so what are the methodologies that are taken care for making that to happen so that we have to think and uh, so these are all the main challenges not only that i i stand on the side of the students uh, i want to tell one thing previously 30% of the students were struggling uh, in our uh, college itself not 30 but it is going to be 50% so many people cannot buy a laptop because lockdown has happened very what do you call uh, we didn't expect it it happened so now i cannot expect laptops to be there with the students and mobiles okay they want to have a good bandwidth and a lot of memory will be consumed uh, sorry this uh, uh, <coughs> internet uh, this one will be consumed, uh, consumed and they have to ask parents to again reach out their uh, Uh, they have to put the uh, data in that, and then they, they, if, we, if they want to listen for three hours or four hours like that continuously, so it will get exhausted. Again, they have to uh, what you call recharge with uh, the data recharge. They have to do. So these are all some of the practical difficulties, and sometimes voice may not be visible. Uh, sorry, audible, and videos may not be visible. So challenges are everywhere now. So slowly, one by one, we have to. Uh, yes, uh, morning only I discuss with uh, Dr. Jalen. Sir, every online class, yes, we can conduct. That's okay. How many of them are real? Uh, uh, this particular content. How many? To how many? Uh, how many people are really? We uh, they are reachable to this? I ask you. So we don't know that. So that is uh, going to be a real problem ahead. So we need to address that also. So. and uh, uh with this i think i am done and i want to uh, conclude my uh, presentation and i thank uh, uh, priyadarshini college for giving me this opportunity uh, to present before you i congratulate all the uh, the uh, what do you call people uh, all the faculty members and staff members uh, both the teaching and non teaching who really contributed uh, and uh, contributed towards this and made this uh, particular vpt uh, because another two days are there but uh, i am concluding i want to tell that uh, it is uh, dr jayan uh, along with his team uh, they have uh, they are doing a good job at this particular moment to make all the faculty members and students active and understand the things uh well ahead uh, because uh, everybody is going to face challenge uh, from uh, like uh, previously last two uh, three months we are facing it again we are going to have some uh, the, the, the same thing may continue for another three or four months we don't know or it is going to be a year we don't know so but learning should not stop and uh, uh, education will not stop so we need to have uh, we need to learn tools to uh, do all these things so that's why i congratulate the entire team of priyadarshini uh, for giving me this opportunity as i have taken only a small part of it portion of it but uh, sudhat uh, he has given uh, he he knows the right people but uh, i am not a right person to talk on the tools and all because three tools i can tell but uh, uh, he has taken uh, he has uh, contacted right person sudhat so uh, anything you need definitely from on behalf of uh, csc uh, pcmr cet we are definitely helping you out uh, uh, to uh, like uh, color we can also help you out uh, to implement uh, and address all the challenges whatever you are facing within the scope within our scope of uh, uh, like uh, whatever which is permissible within our scope we can do it thank you very much dr jayalan garu and uh, uh, professor nansimalo garu and uh, 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 
ప్రొఫెసర్ సుప్రియా మేనన్ గారు అండ్ డాక్టర్ నీరుమ గారు అండ్ డాక్టర్ ఉమాదేవి గారు అండ్ అదర్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ప్రేదర్శి కాలేజ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ అండ్ ఎనీ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఐ మీ హియర్ టు అస్ యూ కెన్ ఆస్ సో వాట్ ఎవర్ ఐ నో ఐ కెన్ ఆన్సర్ థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ డాక్టర్ పతంజలి శాస్త్రి గారు ఫర్ వండర్ఫుల్ అండ్ సెషన్ ఓవర్ టు ఉమా మేడం అండ్ సుప్రియ మేడం అండ్ ఉమా మేడం ప్లీజ్ రెస్పాండ్ ఆడియన్స్ కి ఏమైనా పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ కి ఏమైనా డౌట్స్ ఉన్నా కూడా సారీ ఇస్ గోయింగ్ టు గివ్ సమ్ క్లారిఫికేషన్ అండి ప్లీజ్ సర్ యు హావ్ ఎనీ క్వరీస్ ఫీల్ ఫ్రీ టు ఆస్ ఆర్ షేర్ ఇన్ కమెంట్ Madam, and one more thing, if at all you have anything, you can also mail me. Uh, I don't have any problems, uh, like uh, with the students also, they can mail me. Uh, it is not the first time I am called, uh, I'm, uh, like, uh, uh, I came to your college once and then I have seen all of you and I am not new to you. You can uh, freely ask any questions. Uh, at any time, I am uh, readily available to you. Uh, whatever I can uh, uh, answer or uh, within my scope of knowledge, I can definitely do that. At present, we have one question. Uh, yet, in my opinion. Any tools or platform conducting descriptive to test research? Is there any tools or assessments to conduct descriptive to test research? Uh, as of now, we are conducting only the objective uh, type of questions, madam. The assessments are happening, uh, like we need to create, uh, we, we are already having what you call to measure the course outcomes and all those things. Uh, we can do that uh, uh, like uh, 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 with using some ICT tools only. But uh, the assessment, what I am uh, talking about is a student sitting at home, how we assess that he has completed the content, to what extent he has completed. So we need to come out with the, those tools. So uh, uh, nowadays, uh, some of the online, like Coursera and Udemy and all, they're having that. Suppose if I stop uh, at a particular content, I have not completed this, it will not allow me to proceed further. Even if I proceed further, it will say that this content you have not uh, completed. So those things must be like uh, for us to uh, what you call uh, automate it is going to be a difficult task. But uh, those people have all done that. But we need to look into this aspect also. That's what exactly what I am telling. Uh, so also, that is also a challenge for us. So that's what I am telling. But uh, we, we, we will look into that, madam. I will, uh, I'm asking my team to do that. We, even uh, at this particular juncture of time, uh, even our uh, uh, team, along with uh, our principal, we are working on these things. Uh, today also, I, uh, he only asked me, our principal asked me, uh, sir, we have to, uh, what do you call uh, this, uh, big blue button should be integrated with Moodle. He asked me, today I, I asked my team to work on that. Uh, it is a plugin, so why can't you do that to the Moodle? So that Moodle can be used for that. You, Moodle, can, we can use it for assessment only. So, if you integrate this uh, teaching through the uh, big blue button and integrating that with the Moodle will help, will help us to monitor our progress also. So, that we are doing. Once we, are, we complete it, we will definitely share with you. And if you have something in your mind, you can also share with us so that it will be a collaborative thing, what we can do. But Moodle is the best tool as of now to monitor and measure students' performance. So, we are doing that. And uh, But one thing is, uh, uh, we need to integrate like uh, uh, videos, uh, like uh, the video conferencing also through Moodle. Once it happens, I think it will be very easy. Uh, the latest version of Moodle allows that to, to have what you call your blue blue button in that uh, can be uh, integrated with your uh, Moodle. 
So we are. Uh, I also shared with J. Uh, J. Lakshmi also previously. So we are working on that. We are working on that. But we can do that, madam. No problem. Very quickly. Uh, in the coming days, definitely we will come out with a solution. We have to work on that. Okay. Okay, sir. There is one more question, maybe. Yeah. In public talk. Okay, sir. No, no more questions, sir. No more questions, sir. Uh, sir, wait for, wait for five minutes, sir. Uh, we'll have a conclusion session. Supriya, madam? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Sir, sir, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing valuable and informative knowledge with us. This is great pleasure to propose a lot of thanks to today's speakers, Professor Patanguru Sastriya Keller, sir. I am the hope of every day here. Today, I acknowledge our sincere gratitude to Professor Patanguru Sastriya, sir. He nicely explained about the impact of COVID-19 on education and how to overcome the problem. At present, as the world is reading from pandemic COVID-19, pandemic, uh, there is increased need for professionals like us with the knowledge and expertise online tools. Sir, explain how to design and making new e-learning resources. From this session, we came to know that popular e-learning resources like MOOCs, YouTube Education. The extensive research resources, we came to know how to solve the problems in engineering mathematics. Using these resources, it will be helpful for first-year BTEC students. We believe that the knowledge shared today helps immensely in the teaching learning process. Thank you once again, sir. We are grateful to Chairman Sir, Dr. Kotapalli Navin Babudwaru for his continuous cooperation and guidance for conducting this faculty development program. I extend my thanks to Principal Sir for his guidance and I, Natsura Sir, Head of the Department of CSC for his support. Thank you, Sir. With this, we end our session today. Hope all of you, all of you, all of you have enjoyed today's session. Please fill the attendance from feedback form which was shared to you in public chat and also in WhatsApp group. Thank you for your patience, patience listening. See you all tomorrow. Have a nice day. Thank you all. Before leaving, we made one note. Uh, tomorrow session is going to be start at 10.30 a.m. Please make a note of, note of it. So before 15 minutes, we share the link in your WhatsApp group. Thank you, sir. Shall we close, sir? Principal, sir? Yeah. Sir, okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Dear Thank participants, we'll uh, meet shortly by 10.30 tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you, Alus. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.